Hi everyone, welcome back to this series. Today we're going to cover comp time, which I'm not sure if any other language has anything like this, but anyway. Uh, so what comp time is, is so in compiled languages, what happens is the compiler will scan your code and then convert it into machine code. So if something is uh, deterministic and will be the same every time and the computer can work out what it is, it is known at compile time. So things like arrays, like arrays, you have to know the size of an array at compile time. Otherwise, it's not an array. It's a dynamic array, a list, a vector, or something like this. Um, so you need to know an array at compile time. It can't make one otherwise. Um, Stuff like if you read from a file and, you know, how many letters are there? You don't know. You don't know at compile time. Uh, so things like this. And it has to be deterministic. What you can do, there are things you can do in Zig with compile time, which is pretty cool. You can um, do stuff like maybe you don't know what a variable is. Maybe, um, but, but I'll show you, basically. So here I have this function called show comp time. So first of all, I'm going to have add result bad. Uh, which is, I can't even find it. Sorry, yeah, okay. Yeah, so add result, mm, add result 18, I8, add result I8, bad equals add I8. So we just want to add some numbers. Uh, we'd have a bit of error checking, but it doesn't matter. Um, the reason why you normally want to add stuff, like call an add function, is just to check errors, because um, obviously you could just plus, and you don't need to call a function for this. But anyway, so... What we're doing here is we're simply we're adding in number i8, number i number two i8, and then we're catching number yeah we're just catching if there's an error. So we're just adding two i8s together, and then we can get the result. What's the problem with doing this? It only works with an i8, so it can only work with eight bits and assigned assigned eight bit integer. If you put in an i16, an i32, a u32, an i64, a u64, it won't work. You'd have to make another function and do it like, you know, copy and paste this, make this i64, 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 i64. Pretty, uh, pretty tedious, right? You can also overload the function. I guess overloading is a thing. Um, but wouldn't it be great if you could have the compiler work out the type, like a generic, and just have it work? Well, there's a thing called comp time, which allows you to do this. So here I have a function called add. There is actually one in the, I've, st I've copied the standard template library add, which is it has a bit more complicated error checking here. But it, basically what, what it starts out with is comp time t is a type. And then a is t, b is t, and then you return an error or you return t. What this basically means is t is whatever type you put in. So if I put in U8, that's going to be T. So T will be U8. That will be U8, and so return a U8. If you put in U64, T will be a U64, and it'll be a U64. It basically will just uh, replace whatever you put in. And I've made my own, which is very simple. Uh, it doesn't have any error checking or anything like that. But anyway, so we have just type, type, and we put this as a type. I guess in that it was a T, but I just like to call it type instead. And then we return the type. So how this works is you basically put the type in. So if I show you uh, here, so I've replaced this before. What you can do is if you don't know the type, you can pipe in, uh, I don't remember, at, yeah, at type of, and say number one i8, like this. So if you don't know the type, you can do that, at type of, and it will tell you the type and send it to the function. Um, but we're just going to put i8, because we know it's an i8, because we've called it an i8. Um, and this will basically allow me to call exactly the same function, add with a i8, a u8, an i16, and a u16. You could go forever if you want, you go to u28 or u64. They all do the same thing. So if I show you this compiled, it just uh, say 10, 20, 30, 10,000. So here, 10,000 plus 10,000 is 20,000. 5,000 plus 5,000 is 10,000. So it, it works like that. This is comp time. It, it basically will work out what it is and add it for you. You don't need to create 10 different versions of every function. Um, then uh, we have, yeah, so wouldn't it be cool if you could know the type of things just by, you just print the type. And I have a function here, print type. 
What does that do? It prints the type here. So comp time type, input type, and then we just print it out. The type of the variable is type of. Um, so sometimes it's pretty interesting to just know what things are. So we go to this. Type of variable is comp time int. So here I have 10, 1.0, 1 billion, a text thing. Uh, then we just have this, and then we have STD, which is the uh, here, import STD. And then we have print. So I want to know what print is. What's print? Uh, turns out print's a function. Print's a function that takes in a comp time uh, slice and any type. Um, and then STD is a type, whatever this means. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what type means, but anyway, I believe that it's a struct, but I'm not sure if. Uh... Anyway, it will give you type back. I have the same with the max function. So uh, here, max. You want to know what the max number is, and it doesn't matter what the type is. It could be U8, U16, U64. It doesn't matter. Here I've done max U8, uh, and then min I32. That just it doesn't matter what you put in. Uh, here I should probably replace this with uh, I guess U8 maybe, but you can just put at type of if you don't know the type and you don't need to care. Then uh, next is probably the most interesting thing. So we need to know what uh, to make an array. Oh, sorry, I should <clears throat> first of all I should go through this right. So in earlier episodes I said that var variables, mutable variables, are not known at compile time and that's fairly true. So if I put in, um, if I put, say, for example, var here and 10, here I have an array that goes to 10. So it goes uh, index 0 to 9. If I put in 10, it's going to give me an error. As I've mutated this variable, it's going to crash at runtime. It didn't crash at runtime because I didn't hit save. If I hit save, then it will crash at runtime. It crashed at runtime. Panic. Index that about. So it crashed at runtime. When it panics, it crashes at runtime. If we make this instead a comp time var, this is now known at compile time. Because, well, 10 is a comp time int. It knows how much we added, so it can work out what it is. This basically means it's it can change, but it, it's known at compile time still because 10 is a deterministic value. So here we can run this, and it will crash at, com at compile time. So when it panics, this is crash at runtime. When it does this error, this is a crash at compile time. So if you make it a comp time var, it is known at compile time. But you have to use, if I put in like var random number, u size, and make it like a thousand, and then, and then go random number, minus equals 100 or whatever and then do random number here plus equals random number the problem is random number is not known at compile time so this will give us the same panic it doesn't know uh, error uh did i save it sorry i put yeah sorry wait uh run this again so yeah so here actually here it actually crashes at compile time because uh, random numbers not known at compile time. So it says cannot store runtime value in comp time variable. So this is a runtime value because it's not comp time. So we haven't listed var as comp time. This random number as comp time. You can't use it here. Let me just remove this. So you make this comp time and make this plus 10. And that will know. It will know that it's outside the bounds. So if you make something comp time and then you know, change it with a non comp time value, it will give you an error just to say. I'll just make this 9 so it doesn't crash. So next we have something quite interesting. You can actually do dynamically set the size of an array if it's deterministic. So here I created char array and it's array size. And what's array size? It's a comp time var and it's 1. So it starts at 1. So we make a, an array of 1. And then we just set it to the starting letter plus i, which will be 0 in this situation. Starting letter is a. So basically this will be a. Then we add 1 to array size. And then we create another char array, and it's the array size now, which should be 2. And then we loop through. So what an inline loop is, an inline loop will basically, it will just copy and print it out. So instead of like writing this and going to the for loop, going to the for loop, it will just print out each line and the amount of times you have. But the amount of times, again, needs to be known at compile time. It, if you say, like, get a, get a number from the user input and then 
past that number and then write a for loop zero to that amount, it doesn't know it at compile time. It has to ask the user which is at runtime. Um, so if you want to use an inline for loop, I believe if I use a for loop, it will give me an error because it has to be inline. Yeah, it gives me an error. It gives me an error. Find u size. What's this? Ah, it doesn't even know what I. That's weird, actually. I'm not sure why that's giving me an error because it doesn't give me an error when I put inline here. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway, so you have to put inline, otherwise it gives you an error, because um, it has to be no. Basically, inline is for compile time. That's what it's for. Uh, but we do this with four arrays, and then let's look at the result. I just put a slice at the end, uh, and then look at the result. We have char array 1, A, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, C, D. So because we know at compile time, we can create arrays dynamically like this. Obviously, it wouldn't work at runtime. You can't make an array at runtime that has a random amount. It won't work. It has to be deterministic, has to be known at compile time. This is the power of comp time. It's pretty interesting, actually. It's quite useful. Um, it's pretty advanced, um, but just mess around with it. See what see what kind of things you can make. Um, just like you know, try to make an add function like this, uh, and put in different types and see if it works. Um, but it's a pretty cool feature. But let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time.